Hey everybody, Jochen Haydn here, and I'm back with the Lodrick vs. Haydn 28 January 1942 Turn 53 Combat Replay and Analysis. So here's the stuff that we can look forward to in this turn. We've got the Killers of Cagayan going after the two Naval Guard units there at Cagayan on Mindanao. We've got Clark Field, because that's always a, a big mystery. You never know what's going to go on. We've got the Operation of Kukong getting ready to kick off. I don't know if it's going to... I don't think we're attacking this turn, but it will be... <clears throat> soon and then of course we have the invasion of java which is currently ongoing and anything else that happens so let's uh let's watch it together and see what happens okay and we're off it's the 28th of january 1942 okay so he grabs the base of butuan for free Oh, that's so awesome. That's a big one. Did you see how big that thing was? Yeah. Okay. S34 is taking a pummeling in, in uh, retribution for that. Uh, it's not looking too good, guys. Yeah, that sub's taking a, a battering right now. I've never seen that comment before about the fuel tanks being damaged, so uh, we put one torpedo into the Tenyo Maru. That's probably not enough to sink it. I, I doubt it. That was a big looking uh, cargo ship. So my theory about the Tulagi uh, thing is correct. He's definitely coming ashore there. Let's hope that we can get S-34 out because I saw some pretty disturbing comments about the hits. So, okay. No sinking sounds, and I don't think we're going to hear them either. I hope S-34 can get out. Okay, so... No naval movements means that there was no, um, you know, uh, no naval engagements that we need to worry about. A lot of sightings. Whoa. Was that, did that task force move that far south? Okay, so he's going pretty hard for Sion again. Well, take that back. This is not a particularly large raid. It's got some good escort, but these single-engine bombers don't do a lot of damage. As you can see, they didn't really accomplish much. Now these, <laughs> these, these lilies carry a bit more. Still not too much damage taken. Uh, the heavy cloud is probably helping us here. Okay, well, that AM phase is pretty, pretty benign. Hmm, whoa, did you see that? I think we need to go take a look at Wake again. Oh, looks like we had a, a sub chaser with our, our naval patrol there, naval search. Oh, oh, no. Oh. That's not so good. Let's see if they get through. Dang it. He baited us. He baited us, man. Afternoon air attack. He baited us good there. So, he has long-range cap flying over these guys. He baited out our... our um. I see what's going on here. Look at this. We have a major movement going on here. Oh, I I'm not I I think we lost some aircraft here. I don't think that we 
I don't know. We'll take a look at the this. Mm. He baited us good. He's, he's gaming us really good on that. All right, so that's it for the raids. That was a pretty quiet. Um, that was a really quiet uh, air fay air day, right? So we got an amphibious landing coming in at Sebolga. This is on the northern part of Sumatra. Uh, not entirely unexpected at all. Okay, we whack. We got him coming ashore at Wewak, and this is actually a pretty important base for the Japanese. Historically, the Japanese Army Air Force had a significant amount of ships um, here. Uh, ships? I mean aircraft. Okay, the daily bombardment at Changsha. I'm going to fast forward through this because there's not much to glean from it watching the animations. Well, we actually blow up one of his guns for once, but we take, take a lot of casualties on our side for this. But again, none of this is stuff that we, can, that we can't handle. Bombardment up here. I don't know why he continues to do this. I, he's got to be burning more supplies than we are. Whatever. I mean, I don't. I don't know what the point of this is, but okay. A bombardment at Clark. Pretty. Pretty significant losses for us on this one. Ah, Serbaya. Ah, he brought more. You see that? I think he's got more more troops here now. Including an entire infantry division that we did not see before. So this is a pretty substantial amount of force that he's come come into here with now. Yep, and he captured Hello, it. Hello, my misguided mm. friends. This is your number one enemy, Orphan Anne, from Radio Tokyo, with another blow to your morale and some music to console you. Today, the Imperial oh, government announced that the ever-victorious forces of the Japanese Empire have captured Surabaya. Yeah, so... In the typical Gary Grigsby ground fashion, when you retreat, you you lose. Apparently, everybody dies when you when you run away, and the Japanese take basically no losses. But um, we had a lot of engineers there, and I'm hoping with the preparation that they had, that they just completely annihilated the base. Like the damage level should be high. I'm hoping. So the units that were destroyed were units that are static and they couldn't move. Well, that's the end of Surabaya, man. We got a lot of use out of it before it went down, right? Alright, so this Naval Guard fragment here is taking Tobuali on a Banka. It, again, it's it, it's fine. Oh, hey! Shock attack! Um, this should go pretty well. So we we blast that unit. I mean, they've got to have almost nothing left. We destroy a ton of, of stuff. So now we're going to pursue them into Butuan. Uh, it's not ideal. I wish this hadn't gone down this way, but it is what it is. So. Hmm. I guess it's not the, the worst turn ever, but it's it could have been better, I guess.
Okay, so we got a couple ships coming in at Abaddon. Well, okay. It's, it, other than the fall of Serbia, I mean, there wasn't much to talk about here, but we'll go ahead and look at the numbers. Okay, guys, we're back with the numbers. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so let's start with aircraft losses for today. Um, much to my surprise, that crazy PBY attack that we launched, like I intercepted, we didn't actually take too many casualties from that. So uh, we're reporting one air-to-air -air and one ops loss. He lost three each aircraft here. You can take a look. We lost another PBY-5. This is probably a Dutch one. For a total of three to three, okay? Looking at the top pilots, we have one KIA. I'm sure it's one of these guys that were shot down on the on the flight out to him. Uh, Army lost points for this last turn creeped up significantly against us because of the troops that were lost in Surabaya. Uh, but his went up a bit too. But we're, we're holding it just a little bit above 10 to 1 rate, a little bit below 10 to 1 ratio there. It is what it is. Uh, some of those troops that Surabaya were static and I couldn't get rid of them anyway. So that's just the way it is. I think the reason that his army loss points creeped up a lot was because of what happened on Kagayan. Looking at ship sunk this last turn, uh, nothing is reported. We're holding at 46 to 256. I think it's more than this, but that's all that they're letting us know about right now. Uh, taking a look at the overall score, uh, it unfortunately did creep up a bit on us this last turn. We He is now in the lead about 500 and... 70 points give or take uh, and he's going to continue pulling away as the time goes on uh, part of that is from our lost points part of that is from him taking Sir Bio. but we'll take a look at that when we get down to Java uh, let's take a look at the SIGINT if there's anything noteworthy here something out of Takao mm, doesn't tell us much other than we know he's got aircraft and ships here okay Still got stuff stuck at Singapore. Babel's got some activity. Singapore's got some activity. Rapid fire gun battalion at Singapore. Hmm. Look at that. He's loading. He's got a, a Japanese Air Force company heading to Ternate. Yeah, I'm worried about that. You see, he's got a lot of ships moving in here. I think he's moving in here to set up an air base so he can power project some aircraft into this area. He's not happy with what we did to him at Kandari. So he's actually moving stuff in to build up the base of Ternate. Uh, and that might shut down the Dutch Air Force out here in this part of the Dutch East Indies. I see what he's doing here. Anyway, let's take a look at China. Uh, it's the usual bombardment activity here at Sion. He's just burning up his supplies. Uh, to the north, we know he's got Hami well under control. We're retreating this unit back to Urumqi, although there's not going to be much they can do. I can't believe I didn't even notice that. He should set that. Although it won't take him anywhere near 100 days to get in there. Anyway, we're going to fall back here and we'll try to hold this as long as we can. And unfortunately now the fuel's backing up here. And once he takes it, he'll get a lot of this back. But we are moving troops into Langchow. Um, and we'll have at least 800 AV in there by the time everything is said and done. So once that's done, we can mount a good defense against whatever he's got. 800 AV or so, we'll be able to counter it here. Uh, not much activity in the central part of China this turn. He didn't bomb us. We didn't bomb him. He did had very little air activity here, honestly, 
Actually, there was almost no air activity in all of of China. So I'm wondering if this is it. If you take a look here, uh, this bad weather indicates places where you're not going to get any air activity or minimal at best. So anywhere we had these clouds last turn, um, that's probably why. Oh, excuse me. <sighs> Sorry, it's late here in California. Um, yeah, but it's pretty quiet in China overall. Uh, we continue to build up here at Kukong. We now have over 2,000 assault value with another 400 on the way. And once these guys are in, we're ready to push again. So I'm looking forward to reducing these guys so we can just get on with our, our war. Uh, but we do have some time pressure here because if you look here, that, that unit that was up here is now here. And he's going to be in this hex probably within a turn or two. So we've got maybe two turns to make something happen here before he potentially blows this unit out. And now he's got a pathway to escape. So we don't have a lot of time here. We need to really finish off that unit as, as best as we can. All right. So I want to show you this in Burma because this is very frustrating to me. Um, so this is what Lodric's doing. Uh, as you recall, our PBYs attacked this unit here. But do you see what's within range of that unit? Bangkok. So he intentionally stationed this unit here as a bait unit with these crappy little ships. And he has long-range cap flying over them. So he's trying to bait out my PBYs to attack these. Because if you look here, this unit is eight, seven hexes away from Tavoy. So he's one hex away from a reaction range. And look at this thing. It's 10 hexes away. So, of course, the PBR is going to go for the closest thing, which are these crappy little ships, which are now covered by aircraft. So he's really gaming this up. Now, uh, let me be clear. I'm not accusing him of cheating, and I'm not saying he's doing anything wrong. He's just, just, he's just demonstrating some understanding of how this works, okay? So I'm not, you know, if I were in his position, I'd probably do the same thing. Um, but what that's causing is it's this stupid little unit here is acting as a magnet for any air attacks. So nothing's going to be directed at this. It's all going to go to here. So I'm going to have to figure out how to counter this now because I can't continue losing PBYs attacking this. Because I'll get nothing out of it. These ships are worth nothing. So well done, Lodric. You figured out how to mid-max me to death on this one. Um, we have this unit here which I suspect might be an invasion force for Port Blair. I really hope it is. He's moving northwest, but Port Blair's got a little bit of something-something here that he's not aware of, so I'm hoping these guys run smack into the middle of these and blow up some ships here. Now, this unit, all right, I'm starting to trust this intel a bit more. It's down to nine uh, ships sighted. Four heavy cruisers, four battleships, and a CS. And why do I trust this? It's been exposed to my naval search for several days now. It was indicating ten ships before. Now it's indicating nine. I know for a fact he's got at least four battleships and four heavy cruisers. So that makes sense. It's realistic. And it shows that he has a CS, which I also believe. Because those CSs can be used to carry float planes like a bunch of Jakes. And he's using that as his air search asset. So this is very plausible that that's actually what he has there. And if as long as he's got battleships there, he's untouchable to me because I don't have any battleships in the area and my cruisers have no chance against that. So this is a real thorn, a thorn in my side. And check this out. Notice that. Six. 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 So he's stationed this thing within the six uh, hex reaction range. So any convoys that come down this way he can shoot in here, attack it, and back back out. So this is a real thorn in my side, and he's he's effectively blockading the path from Calcutta to Rangoon. So the ships that are in there are the ships that are going to stay. I'm not going to risk moving them back out because this guy could shoot in here and attack them. So we need to find a way to dislodge this unit. And I'm going to look in my tool bag to see what I got that can possibly move that unit out. Because as long as he's there, I can't move convoys without risking them. So he's really positioned his stuff pretty good to to stop the flow of supplies in the Rangoon right now. By ship, anyway. 
So he's got this here as a magnet for my planes, which is now covered by Bangkok, right? He's got this guy hopefully going to Port Blair to get blown to F up. And he's got this guy threatening our convoy approaches up and down. So he's really kind of got us in a bind out here right now. Now, we're in no danger of running out of supplies or anything. None of my ships are currently at risk. We're good. But just I can't do anything else until I deal with this. Uh, moving south, he just landed here at Sebolga. Okay, big deal. He's just going to leapfrog, leapfrog down from here to here. I think the next place he might go is Sibber Road if he's got the fuel for it. And that's going to be a problem because that's where I have my seaplane base. So once he gets into here, we're kind of out of luck. And I'm going to start running out of places to um, to go, you know. We have this thing here moving southwest, which could be this, a sign of him making a push on Palembang. I have almost no mine. Oh, I take it back. I do have some mines here, but he swept a bunch. So the minefield is kind of known now. So it's not going to function as well when he comes in here again. I don't have a lot of forces in Palembang because <clears throat> we just didn't have a chance to get in there. I can't believe I still have these guys that aren't. I didn't get a lot of forces in here. So 153 AV is not going to do much against them. The fortification level is not coming up very fast either. So uh, if this is the beginning of the invasion of, of Palembang, he's probably going to take it. But we'll keep an eye on this thing and see where it goes and what it turns into. Because obviously we're missing four ships. It's showing two sub chasers and two uh, cruiser mine layers. I don't know if that's accurate or not. So he seems to be consolidating here at Kalajati. He's left some aircraft here as cover. He's got a few ships in port. He's got a bunch of ships in the harbor, which are probably acting as some sort of cover force. And he's got about 11,000 troops here. So what I am doing is I'm still moving my troops to Batavia. At this time, I don't see him moving in either direction, but that could change. Um, I want to get back into Batavia, though, because I think I can hold it against this force with just a few units. Right, just a few of these units here are enough to hold it against this for now until he brings more. Uh, and here's the big story for this battle. Um, we have taken the we we have taken nothing. We've taken losses. He's taken Surabaya, and that's a big deal because this was my Ford sub base for all of the Dutch East Indies and the Philippines and and everything in this area. So now with the loss of this. I no longer have a good place to operate my subs out of. I don't have any ASs around here. The ports are kind of small for for rearming stuff. If you look at this uh, this base, for example, this rearm level is not enough to put torpedoes back into subs. So I'm kind of done operating subs out here. Once they're out of fuel, they're heading down to Australia and they're not coming back. So um, all the only thing I can hope is that my engineers, before they left, blew the holy living you-know-what out of Surabaya. It's not showing any damage to us right now, but that doesn't mean that there isn't any. Maybe we just don't have good recon on there. Um, I know historically, when you have a lot of engineers at a base and they've got good preparation, they could tear the heck out of a base when you evacu evacuate it. So I'm hoping we left Surabaya as a big smoldering ruin to him. But judging from this, it doesn't look like we did. So he just inherited a base that has an excellent port, good air capacity, and now he's going to have a lot of dominance in this whole area once he gets this base put back together, assuming that it's even damaged to begin with. So this was a bad, this was a big deal to us. It's a shame. Um, but it was destined to fall anyway. I was just kind of hoping we could last into. I don't know, February, March or something so we can get our act together better, but it just didn't happen. So he's now controlling this part of Java and it's just going to start slowly working his way this way and probably coming down this way into some sort of pincer move and he'll, he'll control, take all this out. We can take a look at these naval assets here. These are his carriers and now they're moving east. So I think he's kind of gotten the picture about where he needs his aircraft to be. Uh, he's not going to make the same mistake twice here, so 
I need to think long and hard about how I want to be employing my aircraft now that I know he's got these guys heading east. I'm wondering if they're just going to go back to rearm or if they're actually coming down here to tear stuff up. He's got this unit here. Um, don't know exactly what it is, but it's got a lot of ships in it. The President Madison somehow survived again, and it's now a Ban Banjermason. We're going to start chipping away at this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, pier side. And we just need to get, we need to take off some of the system damage. If we can get it below 50, we stand a good chance of somehow finding a way to get this ship out of here. Maybe, or maybe not. Maybe it's just destined to die here. I don't know. Well, I'm going to do my best to save it, but no promises on that. At Terracan, we have this sub, uh, Sea Dragon, which is actually in a seaworthy state now. We may be able to move that back to Pearl Harbor. Down here, just south of Kandari, we've got this task force, which I don't really know what it is. I, I refuse to believe that it's full of CVEs and CVLs, but it is indicating some fighters, so it may be kind of a hard target to attack. And then, of course, at Ternate, we talked about that earlier. He's building it up. We were successful at Kagayan and we pushed his units all into Butuan. So now I'm going to pursue him in here because as far as I know, all he's got is a base force and two really banged up naval guard units. So we're going to press on. Hopefully we can destroy this unit as well. All these units. If it's just a base force, it, we shouldn't have much issue taking that out. Uh, and that is clear terrain. So that actually favors us because we have the disparity of force now. So he's got nothing to hide behind. He doesn't have the infantry that we have on Mindanao right now. We have all the power. So if we can keep him on Butuan, that will actually be good for us because we won't be attacking against bad terrain. We'll be attacking on terrain that favors a force that's stronger. Uh, at Clark Field, he continues to batter away. Uh, I'm waiting for the next attack. It could come any day. Uh, the base is still trashed. Um... We're not building any more forts because I don't see the point. So uh, I, he just needs to keep the pressure on Clark. I don't know why he continues to stop attacking. If he just attacked three times in a row, I think he'd take it. So I, I think he needs to hurry up and just be done with this and take Clark. Push us in the baton and leave us there till we starve. Because once you take Clark, there's no need to worry about baton. You don't need it. The only thing you really need is to clear out these mines. But if you don't really care about Manila... It's not that big of a deal. So we could we could just die on the vine here in Bataan. And he could just kind of leave a token force here. Because I won't be attacking out of there. That's what I think he should do. But, you know, Lodric doesn't listen to anybody. <laughs> uh, moving further south. Um, the Sumatra is doing just fine. And it's well on its way. We're taking it to Brisbane for repairs. I have this guy heading up into, maybe we should go full speed this guy into Ambon, and then we will auto disband it just to have a little more seaplane sea support. All right, let's talk about um, this area, and this is where I'll end the video tonight. No, I won't. I got two more places to talk about. Let's Let's talk here, though. Um, so he's now in Weewok, which is an important base for him. He, 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 he needs this base. It's good for the Japanese Air Force. All these bases up here are good for him. Uh, I'm going to move some subs in here to see what we can do, but he's probably got some decent escort on there. We may take some damage. We've had a very bad week in Solomon's for subs and damage. Let's take a look at that. Uh, this sub is damaged. Uh, let's see. This one is okay. This sub, the one that was just attacked at Tulagi, if you take a look at this, damaged. This is su survivable, so here's what we're going to do. Max Vag 0. And set the home base. We're going to go back to Brisbane for repairs. Hopefully we can get it out of there. Let's keep looking at sub damage. Look at this one. That one's good. This one. Good. This one. 
Not good at all. How about this one? Not good. So we've had about five or six subs heavily damaged in the last week in the uh, the Solomon. So he's got his act together as far as uh, ASW air patrols up here. And then we've had some bad luck with just getting blasted by his escort ships through here. Again, whoever says Japanese escort ships suck, I, it hasn't been my experience. He's damaged way more of our subs than we've damaged of his. For sure. So... At least in early 1942, his sub, his ASW efforts are just fine. Uh, we've taken way more damage than he has. So um, this thing at Tulagi is definitely uh, a, a plus-up task force. He's unloading stuff here. I wish I could find a way to get in there and do something to him, but the subs aren't getting it done. So we'll find another something method thing to do. Um, I got to figure something out, though, because I'm... I'm tired of him flexing into Tulagi. I just don't have anything to power project towards it right now. Ugh. And of course, he's gaming me up real good here. Uh, okay, let me rephrase that. He's being smart. Uh, I'm trying to move this stupid fragment of the LARP Battalion into Gasmata to transport it out with, with the subs, right? But he's got sub chasers here blocking it. I tried to attack it with aircraft, and he's got aircraft flying cap over it. So he's just got me. This is like a chess game, right? And he's got me in like ch ch he's got me in check from two different angles here. So I don't know how to get this unit off the islands right now. And until I do, I can't rebuild the eighth division at Port Moresby. It's just frustrating. But this is Logic being smart. I I can't knock him for it. I'm not trying to suggest that he's doing anything inappropriate. Not the case. He's just got me in a good little check right now on our chessboard with, with things in the Solomons. The last thing I want to talk about on this round is here at Wake. Um, He's got a sub here again. And he's got this thing moving north, east, which is this direction. I don't know what it is. Uh, here's the problem. I have a supply ship trying to get into Wake, but this sub is going to be a problem. It does have escort. We have a patrol craft, but it's not not the, uh, a world-beating patrol craft by any means. So I hope I can survive long enough to get the, the ship in here to unload some of these supplies to reinforce Wake. But if... If I lose any more ships to the subs at Wake, I'm not sending any more, uh, any more ships. If I lose any more ships to subs at Wake, I don't know what I said, but if I lose any more, I'm not sending any more because it's just not worth it to me. So we'll have to think of something else, maybe sub transporter or something else because I don't want to lose ships like this. So we got to figure out what that is, and then we got to deal with that sub, and then we can, we can resupply Wake and get it back in, in action. All right, now I'm done talking. I think I've said enough. I've covered all the big important things right now. Um, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, I did change the way I'm recording stuff in OBS now. So if, if this quality is better to you, please let me know. I got some good feedback two, two videos ago when I said that I was going to be doing a different recording method. Um, I'm doing it for real now, full time. So if you are continuing to agree that this is a better quality video, uh, please let me get that let me get that feedback so I can make sure that I continue to do this and don't revert back. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, it's gonna be a few days before I get on to the next turn because I've got some things I gotta do for with my family. Um, but uh, I'll get this back to Lodric sometime late this week and we'll continue this thing because it's really getting good. Uh, we have tons of activity over here in the Dutch East Indies. Finally, uh, we got the invasion of Java going good for Lodric. Finally, we've got. Sumatra finally is coming around for him. We have a nice little check in the chessboard of the Bay of Bengal with this and this and him figuring out, doing some math and figuring out where my planes are at and what they can do. He's got me boxed in pretty good now. And then China uh, is possibly good for us. If we can conclude business here at China, it'll be a good week to close out. So, uh, Catch you guys on the next one.